Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here today in South Russell, and we're here with architect David Krebs from AODK. Thanks for meeting with us today, hey, David. Good to be here, Thomas. Hey, this is a really cool house that you are working on. It's a residential project. It's called the Treehouse Project, and it has some really unique features. Tell us the, 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 what is so exciting about this project. Well, it's from the starting point, just in the room that we're standing in. One of the things we looked at and we started was to figure out how can we live outside and inside at the same time in the, in the climate of Ohio. You see projects in California or in the south, you can do some things like this, but what does that mean for Ohio? Right. So one of the things we looked at is if we're going to start out, we have to figure out how can we live inside and outside. And looking around in this room that we're in right now is we have the windows at the front of the house, the windows at the back of the house, all meant to open up. And then we also have the windows that go up in the top of the clear storage as we look up in there. Those will all open up, and as they open up, we're going to be able to um, allow the heat to go up. It makes a chimney effect when those open up. The heat rises up, they hit the ceiling fans, and will disperse out. So with windows in every room, natural windows, natural ventilation in every room, the whole house should end up going up and, and uh, ventilating out. So the point of this home was really to be as close to energy efficient as possible. It's, our, our goal is to be off grid and find out what, it, what, is, what systems are available out there right now that actually make sense. There's a lot of hype and a lot of, a lot of literature on a lot of different kind of projects. We really want to try to narrow down what, what actually has value, what has meaning, what would actually is, is, is worth spending money on right now. So you've got two basic systems here, right? You've got a geothermal yes. system and you've got a solar panel yes. system, and they kind of each do their own thing. Talk about the geothermal system. Okay, what the geothermal system is going to do is it's going to uh, allow us to, to heat the floors with radiant heat. And with all the glass in here, we were trying to find what's the most efficient way we can heat these floors, what's the most efficient way we can bring heat into the house, and that's going to be through the geothermal. It's an electric system back up uh, that goes with it, but the geothermal will take the water, takes the water at 55 degrees, turns it up to 120 degrees, goes through the floor, and will radiate through the whole floor, keeping the whole house very, very warm, even with all the glass. So all winter long, you've got a lot of glass, and your heat's still going to leak out through the glass. It's yep. not as efficient as a wall. But this geothermal system actually goes down uh, these pipes, about, what, 50 pipes or so? It, it, it's, yeah, it goes down to the ground. They go down to 150 feet down, comes back up, um, brings the water back out at 100. We, through the system, takes the water to 120 degrees from 55 degrees. Right. And what that's going to do for us is it allows us to say the glass is not efficient, but when it's warm and your feet are warm, your, your body is going to feel warm. Right. So if it's going to be two feet of snow outside these big windows, but you can walk around in your bare feet. It could even be 68 degrees in here, but your feet are warm. You're warm. Because you're still warm. Yeah. And then the solar panel system is going to start on the attached guest, house, guest yes. house over here. Yes. And eventually may come over through the entire facility. Yeah. But that actually puts your energy, your electrical energy, back onto the grid. Isn't exactly. That right? And what we're doing is we're doing what's called net metering. We have a system in here that on sunny days, it's actually going to make your meter run backwards. On uh, not sunny days, you're going to be taking power from it. So when you say you're trying to net meter, your goal is to get back to zero or actually be able to put power back in the system. Right. So right now with the system we have, we're going to be somewhere around 65 to 75 percent of our power will be completely um, from this system. From the system. Now, yeah. it's an expensive system to put in, and right now it's it not... It doesn't make sense financially to just take that solar panels, slap them on your roof, but they're giving tax credits. Yeah. You're also getting credit for this energy you put back onto the grid. Exactly. If you were to go buy the system itself, there'd be, there'd be no value in it. You could, you, it'd be a 50-year payback right now if you're just to say, hey, I'm going to buy this system. I'm going to put it on my house. But through the credits right now, we're going to end up with about 70% off, straight off the top through our state and federal programs. Um, we do that, plus we're able to sell the renewable energy credits meaning power companies need to have power that they get from people, um, their alternative sources. We can actually sell that to power companies who need to get a certain right. amount of that kind of credit. So for us, it's going to be spectacular. We get, we get the benefit of selling them off right now, plus the benefit of the rebates. So we're looking at really a two to three year, four year, right in that range payback time um, as we move along. And that's in Ohio. When people think you can't do it in Ohio, you can right. do it in Ohio. And that's, right. the, that's the cool part about that's it. That's a nice thing that you've yeah. proven here. You know what? Let's take a look downstairs right. at the geothermal system and, and the works behind it all because it's fascinating. Let's Great. take a little look downstairs. Excellent. So now we're downstairs here at the treehouse, and this is where it all happens. This is where the geothermal system takes place. Talk about uh, what happens, because you, you have out under basically the front yard yeah. these tubes going down 150 feet, and then what happens? It's a closed-loop system, it's a correct? a closed-loop system, and what it's doing is you see these lines right here. These two lines, there's an in and an out. Those, right. are, those are the lines that run in. They go out into the ground. They come back in, and what you're doing is you're taking water. It's 55 degrees constantly. 
um, because of the ground. Not we're using groundwater. We're and using that's year-round. It's, it's always 55 degrees. It's always 55. So, so it comes back in the house. It's always 55 right, degrees. Right. So we're taking the water. It comes in. It loops down and goes through this system right here. And we're pulling 120 degrees out of that out of that 55 degree water. We're sending water back into the ground at 35 degrees or so. And what's neat about that is by the time that 35 degree water goes through all the loops down 150 feet in the ground, when something comes back, it's back again to 55, 55 degrees again. So then we take the water that comes from this system, comes now through here. Now you've got to heat it from the 55 yep. here, and you've got to heat it up so because it's going to go but upstairs and heat the floors. It is, it is. But it's actually pulling the heat out of it versus having a burner in it. Gotcha. So it works like a condensing unit does outside in a warm day. It can be a warm day, and you're still able to pull cool out of the warm air. Right. The condensing unit outside it does the same thing. We're pulling the heat out of the water. Out of the water. It's the exact same type of idea. We pull it out of the water, comes through, and then we're actually, then this is a separate closed loop system that it goes into. And what it does is it takes the water, it's 120 degrees, goes through, goes into a holding tank. It looks like a water tank, but it that's not. It looks like a water tank, but, it, there's, but there's, no, there's no gas to it. It's just it's a holding tank because well, holding tanks are pretty efficient. Right. It can, it can come through here. It pumps through. It goes in. We've got a we've got a manifold of pipes that go underneath the floors. Right. These pipes go up. It goes out, and then in this one here, it comes back in. It loops back through and comes right back through the system again. And it might come back through the system. It might be 90 degrees when it comes back through. It goes back through 90. Goes from 90 back up to 120 again, and it just keeps on looping through. So two right. closed systems working on top of each other, very, very efficient, using the ground as the, as the temperature change. You have sort of a figure eight because you've got the loop going out yep. and coming in from outside, mm -hmm. and then you've got another loop going here and up to the floors exactly, and back down. Exactly, exactly. And it said it's, it's not, this is nothing new. It's not any great system. It's right. just trying to figure out this stuff has become so much more efficient now. It actually has uh, incredible value. Now, you did decide to go with a backup system, which yep. is more of a traditional furnace and an air conditioner here, right? We did, and we started the system. What was interesting is the owner said, I don't, I don't want air. I don't even need air conditioning. I don't want it. And we, right. said, and we said, you really you really should have it. We were trying to um, you know, get her, those, those horrible days we had over the last month. And we said, you really should do it. <laughs> For so, those five days a year exactly, in Cleveland. Exactly, five days a year in Cleveland, you should have it. So we went ahead and put it in. We could easily be running the air conditioning and the cooling um, for the summer off the geothermal also. If we wanted to do that system, it wasn't. It didn't have enough value for us to do it because our main thing is her heat because she doesn't want to use air conditioning. Right. So we went ahead and put this system in. If it ever, for some reason, anything breaks with this or anything goes wrong or whatever, yeah. she has an old other system and she does have the air conditioning too as a way to get fresh air changes if for some reason she can't open the windows, but she, she's, she always opens her windows anyway. Exactly, so, yeah. yeah. And these are very low maintenance, so uh, they're, they're industrial strength. You don't oh, need yeah. to go out and fix these pipes no. at all. Talk about the uh, water system for the house as well because you've got some tankless. Uh, yeah, what we did on the water systems is this system. We went with tankless water systems. And what it allows you to do, instead of keeping water in a, in a hot water tank and keeping it at 180 degrees or whatever temperature you're putting it out all year round, even if you're on vacation, it's still sitting at 180 degrees. This only, only heats the water exactly when you need the water. As you use it, As right? You use As it. you turn your faucet. Yeah, you turn your faucet on, it heats the water, it comes out. And what's nice about it is, is each one of the lines here, you can see we've got a master bath, we've got the laundry, we've got master shower. Each one of these is a separate line that's, that's doing it. So it's only calling, water's only going to specifically what you need water for right. and heating it specifically for what it is. A really a small amount of water. If you're just using it in the sink or something, you're using a half a gallon or something exactly. of water and you need it hot just for a moment or two. Exactly. So you might be, you might do something, you heat it up in the morning, you're gone the rest of the day. And you go to work and you right. come back again, you're eight hours or 10 hours, your water isn't sitting there at 180 degrees. Sitting there boiling yeah. all day long, yeah. night and exactly. day for just in case you need to take a bath and use it all. Exactly. Or Right? Exactly. Oh, that's so, great. It's a neat idea if you go away on vacation. If you don't, you don't, you know, people talk about setting it down or doing that, but who really remembers to do that? Yeah, you right, know? right. It's a nice idea, but you know, I'm lucky to stop the mail. So. Exactly. <laughs> hey, David, thanks for taking yeah. time and talking with us. Fascinating yeah. project. Good yeah. luck with it. It must have been so much work. I know you've been working yeah. on this for a couple of years now, and finally it's to the point where you've got some open houses you're showing yeah. people, and uh, congratulations yeah. on that. Good stuff. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.